Itoro, knowing what her mother was capable of doing, decided to avoid her. It was obvious her mother was only pleased with success, but the moment you are down, you would be in her bad book. Itoro decided to look past everything that her mother did to her and stop blaming her for her life's mistakes. She decided to find solace in her little daughter, Uyai. Even though everyone rejected and abandoned her, Uyai would hold on to her with her tiny little hands and look lovingly at Itoru, blessing her with her angelic smile. This would melt Itoru's heart. Uyai, I am sorry I couldn't give you a father, but I'm never going to let you down. I will be your mother and your father. I will make sure you never lack anything and I will lead you right. Itoro promised her daughter with tears in her eyes. Itoro decided to start up a business with the little money M.M. had given to her. She would have gone to the market to look for a space, but she was wary of the insensitive villagers. Ever since news got out of her failed wedding and how she lost out on all the four men with an unwanted pregnancy, the nosy villagers would not stop mocking her even to her hearing. They would point their fingers at her as she passed and some even went as far as calling her the village's prostitute. Itoro already had enough troubles from her mother and so she did not want to be in the same space with these toxic villagers. She then decided to go to the outskirts of the village where she would get a small space and start selling moi moi. Itoro would wake up early in the morning, prepare the moi moi, package it and then bait and feed her daughter before going out for business. The good side about this business was that Itoro always had something to eat as she would eat the leftover moi moi for dinner. This also made her unavailable to her mother's troubles. Ekaite, her mother, could not get over the fact that Itoro was raising a bastard in her house, coupled with the type of business she started doing. It was really shameful and Ekaite would pour out her frustrations on Itoro. It became worse that she even stopped Itoro from using her pots and stove to cook. Itoro had to buy her own pots and then started using firewood to cook in the open. One day, as she was sitting in her space waiting for customers to come patronize her, Udwak drove past and saw her. He had to stop and walk up to her. Itoro, what are you doing here? Itoro was shocked to see Udwak in front of her local shop. She was carrying her baby also at this time and was so ashamed to face Udwak. I sell this to take care of myself and my child. Udwak was shocked. Itoro sold moi moi. Why? Was it that bad that you had to subject yourself to this? Itoro knew that she had to take responsibility and make peace with her conscience and so she apologized to Udwak. Udwak, please, I am very sorry. I know that what I did to you was very wicked and in fact, I won't blame you for coming to interrupt my wedding. I was stupid to think that I could eat my cake and still have it. I shouldn't have led you on, extorted money from you and then go on to marry someone else. The only thing I regret is ever listening to my mother. Who knows, maybe I would have made better decisions. Please forgive me. I was wrong to try to push the pregnancy to you without even being sure if it was yours. And honestly, I don't even know whose child she is. But I don't regret having her. She's my only source of happiness and courage now. I have to start up this business because I don't have any support from anyone except my sister who gave me the money to start this up. Udwak was really moved to compassion and pity for Itoru. This life is really not the way we picture it to be sometimes. Itoru, I really loved you then. Everything I did, I did it because I loved you. I was heartbroken when I heard you wanted to get married and the only thing I could think of at that time was to come and forcefully take you away.
but I would have still married you even then, until I heard of your secret affairs with other men. I did not know what I did for you not to want to marry me. If you had come to me with the pregnancy straight away, I would have taken responsibility. But as it stands now, I am already married and my wife is already pregnant. I think the only thing I can do is to support you in my little way. I apologize for every hurt and pain I have caused you. Please forgive me. Udwak then gave her two big bundles of money. Itoro was astonished. She did not expect it. She was really grateful and thanked Udwak. After Udwak left, Itoro was still in shock. She had come out for business that day, not knowing what was ahead of her. This money was like a miracle for her and she knew that she had to think of a short thing to do with the money. As she went home that evening, she kept thinking of what to do with the money. But the moment she stepped her feet in her father's compound and saw her mother's scornful look at her, she knew immediately that she had to leave the village for her sanity first. When she has sanity, she can then focus on her life and work towards moving forward. Itoro secretly started making plans to leave the village without her mother's knowledge. And the day she wanted to leave, she told her mother, who was very happy and relieved that she would be taking her child out of her house. But she warned her not to be a fool the second time and get pregnant again, as she would not accept any more bastards into her house. Itoro took her daughter, Uyai, and went to the town to start a new life. The moment she stepped her feet into the town, she felt a fresh breath of air blow around her and she knew that everything that had happened in the past had gone with the past. This was a new start and nothing else mattered. Itoro rented a small room apartment for herself and her daughter. She then decided to go into plastic business. She had done her research and found out that the business was profitable. Thankfully, the money Udwak had given to her was enough to cater for all these things. She started the business and would always show up every day consistently, not minding if she made sales or not. Slowly and slowly, the business picked up and she started making steady sales. She then decided that it was time to enroll Uya in his school since she had come of school age. She was able to pay for all the fees and now understood what it meant to be independent and be responsible. Itoro understood the sacrifice it was for you to use your hard hand money to take care of someone else. But she was glad to be doing this for her precious daughter. She had informed M.M. about her relocation to the town. And M.M. was happy that she took the bold step. It was easier for Itoro to visit her sister now. And whenever she and Uyai would visit M.M., she would make sure to pack enough foodstuffs for them and also give them some money. One fateful day, Itoro had taken Uyai to the school before going to her shop. Uyai was six years old at the time. It was the children's playtime and they had all come out to the playground to play. They were all taking turns to play at the seesaw. Uyai had also joined and was about to come down from the seat when she accidentally missed her step and her left foot slided into the opening below the seat. Within a second, her leg got hooked and the sharp metal behind the seat had caught a vein at the back of her left foot. The teacher who was standing supervising them as they played quickly carried her out but at this time, she was bleeding profusely. First aid was quickly applied, but the bleeding would not stop. As the cut was deep, she had to be quickly taken to a hospital to receive proper treatment. As soon as they got to the hospital, Uyai was almost unconscious as she had lost a lot of blood. The doctor informed them that they needed to do a blood transfusion for her immediately. Unfortunately, they had no blood in their bank. 
in the midst of the emergency, a couple who had come to the hospital for their own need heard of the little girl's situation and the man quickly offered to get tested so as to be able to make a donation for her. As the teachers rushed Uyai to the hospital, one of them called Itoro to inform her about the accident and Itoro could not believe the news. She could not imagine anything happening to her daughter, the only source of her hope and strength, the reason she would not accept failure. No, my Uyai. Itoro cried as she rushed to the hospital. When she got there, she was told that Uyai was in the emergency unit and that someone had donated blood for her. Itoro lost her cool. Blood? My Uyai? Blood? Ha! Who did I offend? Who is after me? If anything happens to my daughter, I will kill myself, Itoro lamented uncontrollably. One of the teachers had to hold her to console her. But as she sat in the waiting room, flashes of her sad past swept across her memory. She began to recall all the incidents that had led to the birth of Uyai, and how her life, which was almost over, got revived because of her. Oh God, please, keep my baby for me, Itoro prayed. At that moment, the doctor came out with smiles on his face and told them that Uyai had regained consciousness and the blood transfusion was successful. Itoro was overjoyed and immediately rushed in to see her daughter. Uyai was happy to see her mother, but her heart broke when she saw her crying. Mommy, don't cry again. My leg is not bleeding again. Itoro quickly cleaned her eyes and faked a smile for her daughter. I will not cry again, but please promise me that you won't leave me. Uyai then promised her mother not to leave her. At that moment, the man who had donated blood to Uyai came to see how she was doing, but as he got to the door, it was slightly open and was shocked to see a familiar face hugging the little girl. He was confused and did not open the door, but rather went to ask one of the teachers who were sitting in the waiting room who the woman was. When he was told that the woman was the little girl's mother, he was even more shocked. Itoro, what is she doing here? She even has a child that's grown now. The man thought to himself and quickly left the hospital. When Itoro asked to see the good Samaritan who donated blood for her daughter in order to thank him, she was told that he had left. She felt bad for not being able to appreciate this person and hoped that she would get the chance to meet him. Meanwhile, throughout that night, the man who had donated blood to Uyai could not sleep. He kept thinking about Itoro and her little daughter, and some strange thoughts was coming up in his mind. But he needed to take action to clear his doubts. His wife noticed that he had not been himself since he came back from the hospital and asked him what the matter was, but he brushed it off, saying it was nothing serious. They had been married for five years now and had not been able to have children. They had gone to the hospital earlier that day to see the doctor regarding their infertility issues. The next day, the man went back to the hospital, but he was careful not to be seen by anybody. He called a nurse aside and proposed a business deal to her. I will pay you 50000 I just need you to help me get a strand of hair from that little girl the one I donated blood to yesterday. The offer was juicy and the job was not risky, so the nurse agreed to do it. She went back and came out 30 minutes later to give the strand of hair to the man. He paid her and left. The man was tensed at this point. He had mixed feelings. This DNA test he wanted to do could change a lot of things in his life. As he waited for the results at another hospital, he was filled with hope and prayed that his suspicions became true. After waiting for what seemed like ages, the results came out. 
He had paid specially for the tests to be done immediately, and when the doctor came out with the results, his hands trembled as he opened it to read his fate. His facial expression made a quick turn from curiosity to excitement as he quickly browsed through the papers. He was indeed the father of that little girl. Yes, yes, I knew it. My God never fails me. Oh God, thank you. I can't wait to hug my daughter, my little princess. Thank God I donated that blood for you. Indeed, blood never lies. But, Iporu, I just hope you understand and don't be a stumbling block. He rushed back to the hospital that evening and thankfully Itoro and Uyai were still there. The doctor was just about leaving the ward when he came in. The doctor immediately told Itoro that this was the man that donated blood for her daughter and then left. Itoro turned to look at him and was shocked. She looked at him from his head to his stole and asked, Of young, what are you doing here? You were the one that gave my daughter blood. Thank you very much. I can't repay you, but God will surely repay you. Ophion was dumbfounded and didn't know what to say. He could not bring up the DNA issue, and so he just smiled at Itoro and went to check on Uyai. How is she doing? Itoro told him that she was fine and that the doctor said they would be staying for a few more days at the hospital for her leg to get better before they go home. It is a good thing she's getting better, Ofyong said, and then smiled at Uyai, who smiled back at him. He then excused himself to go out for a moment, and when he came back, he told Itoro that he had paid for all the bills and that she did not need to worry about it again. Itoro was astonished. Ofyong, you didn't need to. You had already given her blood, which is even more than anything. I didn't expect you to pay the bills also. Thank you very much. Uyai, say thank you to uncle. Uyai smiled and thanked Ofyong. And his heart leaped for joy. He already felt a strong connection with this little daughter of his and he did not want to leave her side. Ofyong stayed with them playing with Uyai till late at night. Itoro was surprised at the way Ofyong was into Uyai and she had to remind him that it was already late and he needed to go home. Ofyong did not want to go but he had no choice than to leave. When he got home, his wife was already waiting for him. She was really worried and asked him where he was coming from since morning. But Ofyong lied that he had been in a very crucial business meeting. Ofyong could not sleep that night. He would not stop thinking about his daughter. The peace he felt, knowing that he was not really childless, was incomparable. He just had to look for a perfect time to bring it up to Itoru, and he prayed that she would be cooperative. Ofyong continued to visit the hospital every day, and he would stay for a very long time. Itoro was starting to get uncomfortable with the sudden attachment, but she could not say anything because it would be ungrateful of her to complain about his frequent visits. Maybe he was just being concerned. During their stay at the hospital, the doctor who was treating Uyai would often come to see them and Uyai enjoyed his company so much. When they were alone, Uyai told her mother, I like the doctor. He makes me happy, but I don't like the drugs and injections he gives to me. But mother, why does Uncle Ofyong come here every day? Does he work here? Itoro told her that Ofyong just wanted to be sure she was fine. The day Uyai was discharged, Ofyong came to assist take them home. He offered to drive them and Itoro reluctantly accepted. Ofyong was happy. He wanted to know where they lived so that he would be able to visit them there. However, whenever Itoro took Uyai to the hospital, Uyai would not agree to leave until she spent time with the doctor. 
On this particular day, Uyai had told the doctor to come to their house. Itoro objected immediately. Uyai, don't be inconsiderate. Dr. Udo needs to stay back and walk. But the doctor told her that he could spare some time as he was on break if she didn't mind and Itoro had to agree. As they went back home, the doctor told Itoro, I can see you love Uyai so much. You wouldn't have survived it if something had happened to her. Itoro smiled and said, Uyai is my life. She is the reason I do whatever I do. The doctor then told her, you are lucky to have such a wonderful daughter. She is lovable and smarter than her age. When they got home, Itoro stepped out to get a drink for the doctor. And Uyai took her phone and told the doctor to put his number in her mother's phone so that she could easily call him. Dr. Udo looked at the little girl and smiled because he knew what she was trying to do. Two weeks after Uyai was released from the hospital, Ofyong could not hold back anymore. It was on a Sunday and so Itoro and Uyai would likely be at home. Itoro was surprised to see him, but she welcomed him anyway. He told Itoro that he needed to discuss something important with her and she told Uyai to go outside to play. Ofyong then asked Itoro if she knew who Uyai's father was. Itoro frowned and said, At this point, it is not important to know. Uyai is my daughter and we are doing fine. And besides, all her possible fathers rejected her, so let the past remain in the past. Ofyong then brought out the DNA results and gave it to Itoro who collected it and looked at it suspiciously. She became angry as she looked at the contents in the paper. What is the meaning of this? What rubbish is this? Itoro, I am the father of Uyai. Itoro stood up immediately, boiling with anger. You are talking nonsense. Uyai has no father. And even if she does, it is definitely not you. Or are you not impotent again? Can an impotent man now father a child? Ofyong knew it would get to this point. He stood up to beg Itoru. I am really sorry. I lied. I was just being consumed by the thirst for revenge because of how you treated the men in the village. I was not impotent. At least the DNA results has proven that. Itoro would not hear anything he had to say again, and she thundered, Let's leave it that way. You are impotent. Uyai never had a father. Oh, now I get why you are necessarily being clingy to my daughter. You went behind my back to do a DNA test on my daughter, and you spring that up in my face as if it would change anything. See, I appreciate you for all you have done for Uyai. However, if I had known, I would not have allowed you to give blood to Uyai. I want you to leave now and don't ever come to my house again. Ofyong understood that she was angry and he told her to take her time to reconcile with the truth and also to tell Uyai that he was her father. He then left. On his way out, Uyai was standing with Dr. Udo, laughing and talking. He had come to visit them and had seen Uyai outside. Ofyong's heart skipped a bit when he saw his daughter laugh with another man in a way she had never done with him before. But he comported himself and left after murmuring an inaudible greeting to the doctor. Uyai and Dr. Udo went inside and saw Itoro pacing about the room angrily. Uyai ran to hug her mother and asked her if that uncle hurt her. Dr. Udo asked her if she was okay, but Itoro screamed, How will I be okay? He just sprung up from nowhere to tell me that she is his daughter after rejecting her and claiming to be impotent. Dr. Udo told Uyai to go outside to play so that he could talk with his mother. After she left, he asked Itoro what the problem was. Itoro needed to talk to someone anyway, 
So she narrated to him all that had happened to her and how she had been resilient and single-handedly raised Uyai for six years, only for Ofyong to go behind her and do a DNA test claiming to be her father. Dr. Udo calmed her down and told her that they had to first run a DNA test on their own to be sure. He offered to help her do it. Thankfully, he had donated blood at the hospital so they could easily run the test. Two days later, Dr. Udo brought the results to her and told her that Ofyong was truly the father, but he was confused. Ofyong and his wife had been coming to his hospital to get treated for infertility issues and all the tests ran on them shows that Ofyong was truly incapable of impregnating a woman as he was impotent. Itoro immediately understood the situation. That coward. He sure got what he deserved. After lying to be impotent, just so as to escape responsibility, he is now finally impotent. He will never have my daughter. Dr. Udo felt really bad for her and especially for Uyai. The little girl does not deserve to get involved in this drama. He pledged his support for Itoro and told her to call him if anything arises. On a Sunday afternoon, Ofyong came to visit Itoro and Uyai again. Itoro wanted to send Uyai outside to play, but Ofyong stopped her, telling her to leave the little girl inside. Ofyong, I don't appreciate your constant visits to my house and I want you to stop coming here, Itoro told him. Ofyong asked her, have you told her yet? I would like to take up responsibility of being her father. Itoro screamed at him, she doesn't need a father. I don't need to tell her anything. Leave us alone. You have never been responsible. Ofyong was getting irritated at the way Itoro was handling the issue. Itoro, don't make this seem difficult for both of us. Look at it this way. I want to help you. You can't raise her all by yourself. And besides, she deserves a better life. I am capable of giving her that. Let's just be matured here. Yeah. Itoro could not believe her ears. You open that abominable mouth of yours to say I can't take care of my daughter? Where were you for these six years I have single-handedly raised her? Mr. Man, you didn't donate anything here. If you know where you donated something, go and collect it. Leave my house now. Ofyong was clearly angry and warned Itoro, You can't obviously fight me and win on this. I must take my daughter. As he left, Uyai, who had been looking at the two adults as they quarreled, went to meet her mother. Mommy, is he my father? I don't like him. I want Dr. Udo to be my daddy. Itoro was surprised and asked Uyai why she said that. Uyai then told her that he was usually kind and played with her. Itoro then told her that they cannot force Dr. Udo to be her father and that she would be her father and mother regardless. She then warned Uyai to not mention anything of such to Dr. Udo. Over the week, Dr. Udo would visit Itoro and Uyai and spend time with them and gradually Itoro became comfortable with him. She was also happy that Uyai was happy too. And then one day, Dr. Udo opened up to Itoro. I can't keep on hiding it anymore. Itoro, I am in love with you. I want to be a part of your lives. I want to spend forever making you and Uyai happy. Itoro was shocked. Did she hear him well? Udo, I don't think this is a good thing for you. You don't know what I have been through. I have made lots of mistakes and I don't want to drag you into the mess. Dr. Udo would not back down and tried to convince her that he was aware of everything and he wanted to give her a fresh start. Itoro was speechless and did not know what to say. Ofyong, on the other hand, had told his wife that he had a daughter many years ago and he wanted to bring the girl home.
His wife asked him about the mother of the girl, and he told her that she would be fine. She could always come to see her once in a while in their house, but he wanted the girl to stay with them. His wife felt it was a good idea, especially since they had been unable to have their own child. And so, Ofyong started to think of how to take Uyai away from Itoru. Itoro was at a shop one day when Udo brought Uyai back from school. He had told her that he wanted to do so earlier that day. As soon as they got to the shop, Dr. Udo went down on his knees, brought out a ring and said to Itoro, Everyone has a story to tell. Everyone has made mistakes, but not everyone had been able to correct their mistakes. I want to be a part of your fresh start. I want nothing else to matter whenever we are together. Please, Itoro, marry me. Itoro was stunned. She least expected this. She looked at Uyai, who was cheering her on, urging her to say yes. Itoro could not hold back the tears from her eyes. She would never have thought that a day like this would ever come again in her life. She looked at Udo, said yes and collected the ring. Everyone was happy and while they were carried away in their happiness, Ofyong came in and looked disgustedly at Itoro. Old habits never die. I knew you would never change. You are already jumping into the arms of another man, even when you have a child for another. Anyway, I can't let my daughter stay with you so that you don't corrupt her. Itoro could not bear it again and gave Ofyong a very hot slap. This is for accusing me years ago. And then she gave him a better, hotter one. And this is for daring to accuse me now. Dr. Udo quickly had to step in and warn Ofyong to stay away from Itoro and Uyai or he would face the law. Ofyong looked at him angrily. Is this how you go about sleeping with all your patients? I will surely be back and I must take my daughter with me. Dr. Udo held Itoro and consoled her. Don't worry, he won't take Uyai from you. We just need to be proactive. Once we get married, I will adopt Uyai legally as my child and give her my name. That way, he won't be able to claim her again. Itoro felt better and thanked Udo. Udo wasted no time in paying Itoro's bride price. She had told him that she did not want her mother to be present and he respected her decisions. They then went ahead to have their court wedding and Udo adopted Uyai as his own child. A legal document was sent to Ofyong for him to sign, warning him never to come close to Itoro or Uyai again. And with that, he had no hope of ever having a child. His wife later left him when she found out that he was the one with the infertility issue. Itoro totally avoided any contact with her mother. She did not want her to bring her toxic nature close to her home. She had made that mistake once and would not repeat it again. She and Udo lived together happily and they went on to have two more children. Udo loved all the children equally and showered Itoro with the best love and affection. This story teaches a lot about life decisions, mistakes and consequences. Everyone has a story and everyone has made a mistake. But the difference lies in being able to correct the mistake. A mistake should not be seen as a dead end in our lives but as an avenue for a fresh start and a better tomorrow. The best revenge you can give to anyone who ever stepped on you when you were down is your success. Thank you for watching this story. Please share with me what you love and learnt about the story. Also share the story with your loved ones. Give this video a thumbs up also and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you've not done so. Till I bring another story your way. Bye.